Hello everybody, this is Wolfgang Von Lattman Lazana from ChaliceofImmortality.com. Here in this video today, I want to talk a little bit about heart health and how to strengthen the heart and how to prevent, and in some cases possibly reverse, disease of the heart. So first of all, if you have any kind of uh, illness of any kind, if you have a disease or a condition, you should always talk to your doctor before doing anything that I or anyone else on the internet recommends. Um, I personally believe it's always best to do your own research and use information as tools and take everything you read or you hear with a grain of salt um, and understand that you know all the sources of information you get they're just tools um, and you can you know everybody has a different opinion on different things including many doctors okay so you know, you go to one doctor, they're going to have one opinion compared to other doctors. They all have their own belief system, okay? So, um, with that being said, um, do your own research and um, make a decision for yourself on criti using critical thinking and your best judgment, okay? But always, you know, work with a health professional and get extensive diagnostic testing done, um, and yeah, consult with your physician first. So anyway, um, basically, so if you are attempting to, you know, if you already struggle with a condition or like a heart disease of some kind, um, you're gonna probably be better off with doing a more strict uh, program. You don't wanna be, you know, consuming the same diet that someone would be eating if they're already healthy and they just wanna like prevent heart disease, okay? Preventing heart disease is a lot easier than actually uh, reversing it. Um, there's a lot of people who have reversed their heart disease and uh, there's doctors out there who talk about reversing heart disease and I myself uh, personally believe that if you have heart disease, it's probably better to follow a whole foods, plant-based uh, vegan diet at least for um, a good two or three months. Um, the data shows and through co cohort studies, um, can, you know, people have actually reversed their heart disease using a plant-based diet. But in the long term, your body does require certain nutrients only found in, in some animal products in order for it to function healthily okay, and optimally. And uh, I believe that a vegan diet is meant for healing, not for long-term sustainability. But if you're suffering from, you know, heart disease, um, the it's better to be safe than sorry, and you're probably not going to. It's probably not a good idea to eat any kind of animal products. It's probably not a good. It's definitely not a good idea to eat hydrogenated oils um, or anything like that. Okay, anything that can potentially damage the uh, arteries or the muscles of the heart or your vascular system in general um, is not a good idea to consume that you don't want to risk it so reversing heart disease um, that's completely different from preventing it and uh, the information I recommend you look into would be um, found in a lot of these vegan doctors talking about reversing heart disease. However, I myself am not a vegan and I don't think it's good in the long term. And, that, and I feel like, um, and I recommend if you do follow this approach, do your best not to fall into the vegan dogma and believe that it's the only way to be healthy because it can reverse diseases, but it can also cause diseases. A lot of people don't want to believe that, but it's true. And um, it's, it's just meant as medicine, okay? Food can be your best medicine, all right? And in this case, that's what it's all about. And when anytime you take medicine, um, you're not supposed to be taking this medicine, you know, taking medicine for heart disease after it's already worked, you know? After your disease is healed, you don't have to continue taking that medicine. You see what I'm saying? So vegan diet is medicine to cure heart, to reverse heart disease, but don't take it long term. You're not gonna take antibiotics for your entire life after the infection is gone. So anyway, there's that. Uh, but preventing heart disease is a lot easier. So uh, at a baseline, 
the things you want to remove uh, and avoid are simple. So processed sugars, remove them from your diet. That means white sugar, brown sugar, organic sugar, raw sugar, um, isolated sugar, okay? Remove that from your diet. Um, honey can be all right. Um, I, especially if you're working out, I take it pre-workout, it works amazing. Honey is good uh, for that quick burst of energy. Um, fruit is, all, is good, you know, that's not what I'm talking about, but processed sugar, remove processed sugar. Uh, second thing to remove is definitely hydrogenated oils, um, mono and deglycerides, and any type of um, uh, modified artificial fat. Okay, these are usually found in processed foods. So as long as you remove processed foods, um, including you know conventional baked goods and candies and um, frozen foods and fast foods and stuff like that. If you remove that from your diet, they're likely to be okay. You know, pre-seasoned, pre-packaged foods, pre-seasoned meats and stuff, they tend to have these in them. Uh, so remove those from your diet um, for sure because these have been shown to uh, damage the arteries and cause inflammation in the cardiovascular system uh, without a shadow of a doubt. So mono and deglycerides, hydrogenated oils, you've got to look on the ingredients list of the food you eat. Um, they're both the same thing and they're both extremely harmful. Vegetable oils, uh, which means uh, soybean oil, um, corn oil, and I would remove canola oil. I'd also stay away from peanut oil. Um, peanut oil is kind of like the better of all these, but um, anything with high amounts of polyunsaturated omega-6 fats, okay? So polyunsaturated omega-6 fats are very bad. They have been shown to increase inflammation of the arteries and inflammation in general, and um, you need these in healthy amounts, uh, and it's pretty much impossible to consume them in healthy amounts if you eat them in oil form. Uh, you get plenty of them in the fruits and vegetables that you, that you eat, and even the animal products you eat. Um, so stay clear of vegetable oils in general. Um, so there's that. Uh, try to, you know, don't go sodium free, okay? Because the heart needs sodium to function. But limit your sodium intake to about 3,000 milligrams a day and try to make sure that um, the only sodium you get is from unprocessed, unrefined Himalayan sea salt. And you know, if you don't, if you don't crave the salt, don't use it. But if you do crave the salt, just add a pinch or two to your food. Um, sodium is not the devil that people make it out to be, but it can raise your blood pressure and it can be harmful in excessive amounts for prolonged periods of time, uh, primarily without enough potassium. So consume a lot of potassium and you should be okay. Uh, if you're looking to prevent, reverse, or uh, you know, remedy heart disease, potassium is very important and uh, you wanna strive for at, at least 4,000 milligrams of potassium a day on average, minimum. Uh, foods that are very high in potassium include tomatoes, avocados, uh, carrots, and um, many fruits and vegetables, okay? And bananas uh, all as well. Also, you need to be consuming a lot of dietary magnesium, which can be found in all of the same fruits and vegetables I just mentioned. Also, cacao powder and cocoa powder. Um, particularly, I believe it was um, one fourth of a cup of cacao powder has something like 4, 000, uh, 400 milligrams of magnesium per day. That's all the magnesium we need. Um, so that's a good, good way to go about it. Potatoes have a lot of potassium and magnesium as well. Um, so I highly recommend you go for that. Base your diet on fruits and vegetables, um, but also don't be scared of high quality animal products, okay? Unless you are attempting to reverse heart disease, eating um, you know, a little bit of red meat a cu or a couple eggs, uh, even a little bit every single day, it's unlikely that you'll develop heart disease from the meat or the eggs. But on the other hand, if you consume 
uh, processed sugar, you consume hydrogenated oils, vegetable oils, and uh, fried foods, deep fried foods. These things, um, they for sure are going to cause you heart disease after a long, uh, after a certain period of time. But if you eat some eggs or some meat uh, here and there, as long as you're not consuming all the other things people eat, like the the margarine and all, and the deep fried foods and the French fries and shit like that, um, you're unlikely to develop heart disease purely because you eat animal foods. That doesn't really make sense. It's not scientifically valid. Um, so, you know, typically when we look at the uh, studies, especially the population studies done on, you know, uh, omnivores or meat eaters versus vegans, right? And these vegans uh, have lower risk of heart disease and the omnivores or meat eaters have higher risk of heart disease. Let me tell you something. Omnivore, an omnivore or a meat eater includes meat in their diet, but they also can eat candy, they can drink sodas, they can eat deep fried foods, fried chicken, okay? Like, oh yeah, meat eaters, you know, have high risk of heart disease and they eat fried chicken and shit. No fucking duh. But they don't control for, um, you know, health conscious meat eaters. And even if they do, what do they think is healthy? You know, consuming sticks of butter every single day isn't necessarily healthy. You know, so you've got to be careful about these studies and the vegan dogma because, um, <laughs> unless you understand how science works and you've actually read the methodology of the studies and you've thought about these variables that make a huge difference, um, you can be easily fooled. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, as far as nutrition is concerned, you should look at my videos on how to eat healthy. You know, what is health? Look at my videos on that. Uh, search it up on YouTube. Um, and I'll go into even more detail about these things on those videos, okay? But essentially a whole foods diet, um, if you can eat organic, that's even better. Remove any kind of processed foods. That means uh, meats, like meats uh, that are cured, okay? With nitrates, you know, look in the ingredients list. If you see sodium nitrate, you see MSG. If you see, um, you know, preservatives, if you see, um, if you see hydrogenated oils, hydrolyzed yeast protein, uh, hydrolyzed soy protein, if you see any of this crap, uh, mono and deglycerides, what a uh, high fructose corn syrup, all these things, steer clear of it, okay? Um, those things are very damaging to the body. Um, so, you know, but look up my other videos on this because I don't want to go 30, 40 minutes talking about, the, about nutrition alone. So there's, also, exercise. You want to be getting um, at least 20 minutes of cardiovascular activity every single day if you're looking to prevent or reverse heart disease. Um, you know, heart disease or cardiovascular activity is one of the most important things that you can do to increase the efficiency of your heart. Because when you walk long periods of time or you run long periods of time, or you do anything consistently that requires blood flow and oxygen for a long period of time, uh, that causes the heart, that trains the heart to pump blood and oxygen throughout the body. So you gotta think in terms of adaptation, okay? If you never, you know, it's use it or lose it. If you never do any kind of exercise, your heart muscle is going to become weak and it's gonna atrophy and you're gonna lose your heart health. But if you use your heart through cardiovascular activity, you know, that's exercising the heart, exercising the cardiovascular system, exercising the lungs. The more you do it, the more efficient the heart and the lungs are going to be, and the more efficient your cardiovascular health will be over time. Uh, cardiovascular activity is extremely effective at building the health of the cardiovascular system. Um, we, it's been shown time and time again through studies and uh, common sense and also just the fact that human beings have been uh, doing hours and hours of cardiovascular activities since the dawn of humanity. We used to walk uh, hundreds of miles a day 
And you can almost think of you know these diseases as exercise deficiency. So make sure you get plenty of exercise every single day. I got more videos on uh, what type of exercise is healthy and yada yada. You can search that up if you want. But as a rule of thumb, 20 minutes minimum per day of cardiovascular activity, throw another 30 to 40 minutes of strength training uh, on top of that three times a week, um, and you got a perfect plan. But ideally, I would highly recommend 45 minutes to an hour of total exercise every day. Um, usually about moderate activity would be fine. Vigorous is great too. Um, and just work on building the habit of exercising at the very least. You know, if you get out and walk 15 minutes a day, that's better than nothing, right? Do a little bit of push-ups here and there, that's better than nothing. Just put effort towards it and you'll see the results, okay? Small, small action creates big results over time. So the sun and vitamin D is also vitally important. I think this is one thing a lot of people don't keep, uh, consider and keep in mind is that, um, so, you know, cholesterol, is supposed to be converted into vitamin D from the sunlight. So, you know, people with higher levels of cholesterol and higher uh, risk of heart disease, think about this. What if cholesterol overloads in the body, um, not just from dietary intake of cholesterol or saturated fat, but what about the fact that we don't convert it into vitamin D like it's supposed to be through the sunlight? What if we could just go out in the sunlight and the sun converts the uh, cholesterol into vitamin D and then the cholesterol lowers in the blood as a result. Um, we know that sun and vitamin D lower risk of heart disease and we know that a lack of sunlight um, increases uh, your risk of many things including sleep, quality of sleep, mood, uh, cardiovascular health, mental health, physical health, um, autoimmune diseases, all sorts of diseases can transpire as a result of lack of sunlight. Uh, I believe that sunlight is extremely important for heart health and if you're serious about your, your health in general, you want to be getting a good 20 minutes of direct sunlight every single day. What I try to do whenever I have sun uh, going on where I live is I take off my shirt even if I was fat, I would do the same thing. Take off my shirt and I just go walking or jogging or running um, at the park and uh, try to get a lot of sunlight on my back and my head. Now, the other thing is if you use sunscreen, um, you're probably not gonna absorb any of the sunlight or the vitamin D and you're just gonna be kinda, uh, it's not gonna work. It's gonna be a waste of time. So if you use sunblock, you're you're only hurting yourself um, and I'm white okay I'm very very white so you know I know a thing or two about this um, I don't use sunblock and I go out there without my shirt on all the time when I was a child I would get sunburn but the more sun you get your skin adapts over time and it can tolerate more but if you just use sunblock all the time your body's never going to adapt to the sunlight your body has a natural adaptation to sunlight um, and so you should embrace that and just work up slowly get a little bit of sunlight here you know seven minutes of direct sunlight and then go inside and then every single week try to get more and more sunlight until your body can just take it you know for long periods of time uh, that's what I do my bald head isn't sunburned or blistered you know so but if you need a sunblock and uh, that doesn't block vitamin D as much, um, coconut oil, believe it or not, uh, is actually a pretty good choice. I know it sounds counterintuitive because it's an oil, but yes, coconut oil, um, if anything, okay? It'll give you a, a light protection from the sun, but not enough to inhibit vitamin D absorption. Uh, then we got stress, you know, you should be uh, just by getting the sun and uh, by exercising regularly and eating a healthier diet, you will, uh, by default, lower stress levels in the body and you'll be able to tolerate a lot more. But meditation, uh, yoga, stretching, breathing, uh, look up the Hemhoff method, 
uh, just slowly breathing uh, through the nose and also practicing squared breathing and just slow relaxed breathing um, guided meditation binaural beats listening to music singing dancing these things have been shown to lower your risk of cardiovascular disease and they will relax you and keep your stress levels down which in turn will increase your cardiovascular health um, Also, uh, practicing appreciation and gratitude on a regular basis has been shown to, uh, actually in, in observational trials to lower your risk of uh, all-cause mortality and also increase well-being and mental health. So, pretty much all of these things, uh, if you put them into practice on a regular basis, uh, you will feel amazing first of all you'll feel amazing um, you will more than likely prevent you know 95% of most diseases in general especially heart disease um, your quality of life will increase and your physical health will increase as well and you'll be preventing heart disease now reversing heart disease you just want to switch out the diets uh, plant-based diet um, and also, you know, work with a doctor, but you need to also keep in mind that uh, if you're on any kinds of medications, uh, you should research the medications that you are on because a lot of these medications uh, as a side effect can actually cause heart disease, they can cause dehydration, sodium, mineral imbalances, and um, they can cause CoQ10 deficiencies, especially sad and drugs and diuretics are the worst um, and they can cause things like depression and, and whatnot and there's uh, there was a couple people on YouTube actually that that had uh, gotten diagnosed with cancer after being on a rheumatoid uh, an arthritis drug for a long period of time uh, the drug actually um, inhibited an enzyme required for breaking down tumors <laughs> So they developed cancer because the medication they were on since they were a child um, uh, stopped their body from removing tumors. That kind of sucks, but you know a lot of people don't realize these medications do this, and then they're they're in denial when they hear about it or when they read about it. Um, but I'm I don't know anything really. I'm I'm just a guy giving information, right? Uh, go ahead and do your own research, and uh, you know make your make your own educated decision for yourself. So this is Wolfgang von Lampen Lazana from chalicesofimmortality.com. Uh, like and subscribe for more awesome information like this. Post your comments down below and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear uh, from your experiences and whatnot, and I'll talk to you soon.